Hello and welcome, my name is Ted and this is Ted K Studio, a place to learn all things design. Today I want to talk about brand archetypes. What are they? How do I use them? How do I apply them to my branding project so there's less guesswork and more psychology and research behind my brain? Well, I'm glad you asked because today I want to walk through all the archetypes, give you kind of the cliff notes and also provide an awesome PDF that I created for you to use as a reference in your next project. Let's jump into it. Archetypes are a great way to build a foundation for your branding so that you can understand how to clearly communicate to your target audience and how your brand should act. And these next 12 archetypes I'm going to walk through are going to kind of explain how the marketing looks, how the visuals look, what the overall mood and the tone of voice is for the brands. The last thing any client wants to hear when we're doing branding is I like, I think. What we want to do is have this concrete base that we build the entire brand on and that's really where archetypes come in handy. We want to use psychology behind our designs and use it as a foundation kind of stepping block where the rest of the brand is built off of. And the way we establish which archetype best suits our company or brand is by asking questions from the client, understanding the target audience, the demographics, the age group, and plenty of other things that you want to ask before you get started. Once you get these questions answered, what you're going to do is take these answers and apply them to the different archetypes and to see which one works best with the brand. So what I want to do is just kind of give you an intro to the archetypes, give you an overview of each archetype and just help you better understand what they are. And then at the end, what I want to do is look at a few brands and guess which archetype best suits those brands to apply this in real life and show you how it's done. So what is the archetype? A brand archetype is a representation of your brand as a persona based on the 12 key human desires and values, such as safety, power, and belonging. The idea behind creating your archetype is to build a brand narrative and create an emotional connection with your target audience. And here's an overview of the 12 archetypes. The sage, magician, explorer, ruler, creator, jester, regular, caregiver, hero, innocent, lover, and rebel. Now just by me reading these off, you can start kind of getting a glimpse or understanding of where some of these archetypes are going to go. So we're going to kick it off with the sage archetype. The sage archetype is a concept in psychology and literature that refers to a wise and knowledgeable person who seeks understanding and offers guidance to others. Also on the left here, you can find these useful. These are kind of the key points, the main characteristics of the sage, the motto, the desire, the goal, the fear. And the sage archetype is all about truth and understanding and setting you free through truth and knowledge. So some of the things that you might imagine the sage to envelop are brands like schools, colleges, universities, newspaper articles, those kind of things. And you'll see right here an example of some of these. So we have BBC Studios, we have the New York Times, we have TED Talks, we have CNN, we have Google, and then the New York Times again there, and a color palette, and also the Toyota here. Now I provided these sage brand examples to help you better kind of visualize what the marketing and what the brands behind these look like for you just to reference. And now you can take these examples and see the kind of branding that you're working on and apply it to your own branding. But if we look at all these examples, the main thing that the brands are trying to get across to you is that they're knowledgeable and that they're trustworthy. So we don't see all kinds of bright colors, crazy marketing. We see simplicity. We see direct communication. We see professionalism with a color palette, with the logos here. You can see the New York Times, how they use this old script letter T. And for Ted, we have these big, bold letters with the red. Same thing with the CNN. It's a simple icon. Google Google, of course, they use these nice bright colors, but they're still very professional and clean. And then this example from the New York Times putting this poster, nice bold serif text. Now let's move on to the magician. So the magician archetype is associated with the ability to manifest one's desires and bring about change and transformation. They're often seen as a spiritual or psychological leaders who aim to raise the collective consciousness and make the impossible possible. So the magician wants to make things happen. Their core desire is understanding the fundamental laws of the universe, their goal to make dreams come true, their fear, unintended and negative consequences, and their strategy develop a vision and live by it. And let's have a look at some of the examples here. So a lot of the magician brands, they try to make extraordinary experiences, otherworldly experiences for us. For example, Disney, they try to teleport you to a different world. Sony, Polaroid, these kind of companies, you don't really know how they do these things, but they want to give you an amazing experience and they do it without you understanding how and just trusting them. And we have MasterCard as an example here, IBM, Dyson, Red Bull. And from these brands, primarily you see this modern, still somewhat professional approach approach but with a little bit more magic behind them and the main takeaway here is that where the sage is all about truth and seriousness and understanding the magician is a bit more theoretical and magical now let's move on to the explorer 
The explorer archetype strives to lead a meaningful and satisfying existence. They are genuine, inquisitive, and self-reliant individuals who are driven by questions such as why am I here and what is my purpose? They value independence and the freedom to create their own path with a focus on self-discovery and understanding the essence of life. The motto, don't fence me in, core desire, the freedom to find out who you are through exploring the world, the goal to experience a better, more authentic, more fulfilling life, the fear of getting trapped, conformity and inner emptiness, the strategy seeking out and experiencing new things escaping from boredom. Just as the name sounds, the explorer is all about freedom and getting out there, not being conformed to one place or one idea or one space, but just being free, exploring, understanding the world better. And here are some of the brands that represent that. So the explorer brands like the North Face, Jeep, Land Rover, NASA, all these brands and all their marketing is all about breaking free, getting out there, exploring the world. As you can see here, never stop exploring. They even use it in the tag line nature needs heroes and of course i don't know anything more explorative than nasa showing the guy on the moon there a lot of the explorer brands are about experiencing and feeling things rather than understanding everything it's more about just going discovering things going in the wild interacting with your environment and breaking free now let's move on to the ruler the ruler archetype is a common archetype found in literature psychology and mythology it represents a powerful authoritative figure who is responsible for maintaining order and stability within a community and society this archetype is often associated with leadership decision making and the ability to inspire and guide others. Examples of the ruler archetype include kings and queens, presidents and CEOs. In psychology, the ruler archetype is often associated with the father figure and the qualities of authority, responsibility, and protection. The motto, power isn't everything, it's the only thing. Core desire, control, goal, create a prosperous and successful family or community, fear, chaos, being overthrown, and strategy exercise. If we're talking or thinking about the ruler, we're thinking about luxury, we're thinking about the boss, we're thinking about making a statement, standing by it and being very confident. So here are some of the brands that fall under that. We have Rolex, we have Rolls Royce, we have Mercedes, we have Hugo Boss, even Verizon falls under that banner. And then we have Louis Vuitton and other designer brands. And these are really top of the line quality products and brands that really wanna position themselves as the leaders, the rulers. From all the marketing, the visuals you can tell that the main ruler archetype characteristic is just being serious, being professional, being luxury and top of the line. Oftentimes with the marketing, you'll see things like this, 5G built right for New York. So these more declarations than anything else. Distronic plus, danger minus, Hugo Boss, The Scent. So they make these proclamations and they stand strong behind them. The next one is the creator archetype. The creator archetype values self-expression and imagination, but it also places importance in structure and control. These brands and companies may be found in fields such as art, design, technology, and marketing, and often promote the free flow of creative ideas. The motto, if you can imagine it, it can be done. The core desire to create things of enduring value. The goal to realize a vision, fear, mediocre vision, or execution, strategy, develop artistic control and skill. I think a lot of us designers will vibe with this archetype because we are also trying to create things of enduring value, try to create the best work all the time, every time. And you can see some of the brands behind this archetype like Apple, thinking different. They're always pushing to the next level and everybody's following and copying them because their main goal is to create the best product for the end user. It's not about the profits. It's not about anything else. Same thing with Tesla, amazing cars, amazing quality and construction. We have Lego, we have Nintendo and Burberry. And really, if your brand is a creator of things and produces things, things of quality and always strives to be the best it could fall under the creator archetype the next one is the jester the jester archetype is a character or a person who's known for their playful and humorous nature often acting as a comedian or court jester in literature mythology and storytelling they're often seen as tricksters who use their wit and humor to outsmart others and bring about change or disruption the jester archetype can also represent the idea of not taking life too seriously and embracing a more light-hearted and carefree approach to life so the motto is you only live once the core desire to live in the moment with full enjoyment, the goal to have a great time and lighten up the world, the fear being bored or boring others, the strategy play, make jokes, be funny. A good example of a jester brand and oftentimes they're brands that are new in a space and they want to make noise and enter the space where there's already these established companies that are controlling majority of the shares or the value. They want to come in there and they want to have a lighthearted approach and they want to disrupt the space. And I think you can think of a few brands like that, but here are a few examples for you to look at. We we have M&M's, we have Old Spice, MailChimp, Doritos, and Dollar Razor Club. And almost all of these use funny commercials. They have jokes in them. They're lighthearted about themselves. Just by the color palette, you can tell it's brighter, it's more fun. 
it's more relaxed, and they don't take themselves too seriously. The next one is the everyman archetype. The everyman archetype believes that everyone matters equally regardless of status, age, ethnicity, or creed. Like a good neighbor, the everyman seeks to do the right thing with no need for heroics or adventure. The motto, all men and women are created equal, core desire connecting with others, goal to belong, fear to be left out or stand out from the crowd, strategy develop ordinary solid virtues, and be down to earth. So the everyman archetype is just how it sounds. It's everybody, it's a casual going person, a friend that can speak to you, that isn't condescending, that isn't super serious, they're just relaxed and they're relatable. A lot of brands want to be relatable to their user base and depending on their demographics or the age group that they target. And here are a few examples. Everman brands are like fast food chains like McDonald's, we have Walmart, we have Target. A lot of their marketing and messaging is all about normal person. As you can see here, we have just a group of regular looking people jumping around in their denim. So the main message for every man marketing is we're just like you, we're for regular people, our prices aren't jacked up like the ruler archetypes, Walmart's for everyone, Target's for everyone, and even this denim might be for everyone. The next one here is the caregiver. The caregiver archetype is a character or person who is known for their nurturing, selfless, and compassionate nature. They are often seen as a helper or supporter who prioritize the needs and well-being of others above their own. They are often associated with roles such as mother, nurse, teacher, and counselor. They are often seen as people who are willing to sacrifice their own needs and desires to help others. The caregiver archetype can also represent the idea of altruism, selflessness, and compassion. In a negative sense, the caregiver may be become too self-sacrificing, neglecting their own needs and become burnt out or resentful. Motto, love your neighbor as yourself, core desire to protect and care for others, the goal to help others, the fear of selfishness and ingratitude strategy, doing things for others. So by just reading this description and some of these key elements, you can tell this is more of like hospitals, nonprofits, those kind of companies. And brands. Some of the brands we can find under this is Tom's, UNICEF, The Salvation Army, Johnson & Johnson, we have Dawn, Huggies, and Campbell's. A lot of these brands are softer in their messaging and their imagery. We have a nice little fluffy duck right here. Tom's, not just shoes anymore, they have this pricing structure where they donate a portion of each shoe sold to help others. The Salvation Army helps everyone around the world. And the primary brands and messaging is just very soft and helpful and supportive. The next one is the hero. The hero archetype is a character or a person who is known for their courage, strength, and willingness to take risks in order to accomplish a great task or overcome a great challenge. The hero archetype is often associated with the idea of a hero's journey, a narrative pattern in which the hero embarks on a quest or journey, faces, and overcomes various obstacles, and emerges victorious. The hero is often seen as a symbol of hope and inspiration, and is often admired and respected by others. In literature, mythology, and storytelling, heroes are often depicted as powerful, skilled warriors, but they can also be ordinary people who rise to the occasion and become heroes through their actions. The motto, where there's a will, there's a way. The core desire to prove one's worth through courageous acts. The goal, expert mastery in a way that improves the world. The fear, weakness, vulnerability, being a chicken strategy to be as strong and competent as possible. Here are some of the brands that fall under this archetype. So of course we have Go Army, the Army, the Military. We have Gatorade, we have Marvel, we have Nike, Just Do It. And we have the American Red Cross. These are all hero brands. These are all brands that promote rising up to the occasion. Nike, Just Do It. They're just telling you to go and do it, rise to the occasion. It's basically baked into their marketing. And Marvel might be a little on the nose, but I'll leave it in there. So the hero archetype's all about rising to the occasion, being strong, being supportive, supportive and encouraging and if you have some kind of gym type of brand or some kind of military type of brand I would definitely lean towards the hero as a archetype choice. The next one is the innocent. The innocent archetype is a character or a person who is known for their purity of heart, their lack of guile, and their unwavering sense of morality. They're often seen as the embodiment of goodness and righteousness and are motivated by the desire to do what is right and just regardless of personal cost. They may be inexperienced or unaware of harsh realities of the world but they are genuine, honest, and sincere in their beliefs and actions. They are often depicted as young, naive, and pure-hearted characters that inspire others with their idealism and innocence. The motto, free to be you and me, core desire to get to paradise, the goal to be happy, fear to be punished for doing something bad or wrong, strategy to do things right. I have a young daughter and she watches a lot of Disney movies and one of her favorites right now is Rapunzel. Now Rapunzel is a perfect embodiment of this innocence archetype. She's locked away in the tower, she doesn't really know the world, she thinks all people are evil and doesn't know what to expect, but through her journeys and experiences she finds out that people aren't that bad and the world is actually not that scary. So this is a good example of a innocence archetype. 
type in the Disney world. Now, a lot of these brands that we'll be looking at for the Innocence are very relatable. They're very friendly. They have these soft marks or marketing for Chobani. They've done a beautiful job rebranding their yogurt to stand out. They really show the nature. They show the outdoors. They use a soft color palette. Their type is very approachable and very friendly. And then this brand over here, Innocent, they literally have Innocent in the name, but they're also very organic and natural. Same thing for Ravino. They're trying to play off as this like natural, very soft marketing. Then we have Coca-Cola, just people enjoying their drink, living their life, pretty innocent there. For the color palette, I've chosen the softer color here. So the takeaway for the innocent archetype is just being very understanding, being open, being soft and generous and welcoming for everybody and trying to make a better world for everybody. The next archetype is the lover. The lover archetype seeks passion regardless of where that focus lies. They're the character that brings emotion and feeling to the stories. They're all about creating relationships and evoking devotion in the audience. They strive to make other people feel loved and secure and take pleasure in meeting the needs of others. Lovers often have a zest for life and revel in the very notion of being human and alive. They follow their bliss and want everyone else to do the same. So the motto, you're the only one, the core desire, intimacy and experience, the goal being in a relationship with the people, work and surroundings they love, fear being alone, a wallflower, unwanted, unloved strategy to become more and more physically and emotionally attractive. And here are a few of the brands that fall under that archetype. So we have Victoria's Secret, L'Oreal, Chanel, Hallmark, Godiva, haagen and Caesar. As you can see, Godiva and haagen the way that they do their marketing is showing people, a couple, they're showing these diamonds. They're really pushing this love narrative, not just showing chocolate. They're really selling the emotions and the love for chocolate, the love for one another through that. A lot of the brands are more feminine in this category. However, not all of them are. But the main takeaway is that they always use love or a form of love to pitch their products or ideas or services. I don't know if you've ever seen a Hallmark movie, but you're not getting out of there without love. And last Last but not least, we have the rebel. The rebel archetype is a character or person who is known for their willingness to challenge authority, break rules and conventions, and go against the status quo. They possess a strong sense of individuality and a desire for freedom and autonomy. They often question the rules and norms set by society and are not afraid to voice their opinions and take action to bring about change. They may be seen as nonconformists, dissenters, or even troublemakers. However, they also have the potential to be powerful agents of change, challenging the status quo, and promoting progress. They may be seen as a symbol of resistance, courage, and standing up for what's right, even if it means going against the norm. The motto, rules are made to be broken, the core desire, revenge or revolution, the goal to overthrow what isn't working, the fear to be powerless or ineffectual, and the strategy disrupt, destroy, or shock. Now let's look at a few examples of these rebellious brands. So we have the likes of Diesel, we have Harley Davidson, of course, we have Uber, and then we have MTV over here. And you can see by some of the statements from Harley Davidson and Uber, how they're pushing this rebellious narrative. You're already know you won't get a seat on the next train. And also Uber, the way it started, the way that it disrupted the taxi industry, it's been a rebel and a re revolutionary brand since the beginning, since the inception. They completely revolutionized the way that we drive and we take taxis. Same thing with Harley Davidson here with the wording, you, you can see, screw it, let's ride. That's their motto, get out there, let's ride. And then we have Virgin Airlines here on the right. You can see all the craziness happening in the background in their tagline, no ordinary sale, no ordinary airline. They wanna disrupt the airline industry, they want to stand apart from their safe, welcoming, friendly competitors. They want to be a little bit wild. And of course, we have MTV over here. From their shows to the crazy ideas that they put in the screens for all of us gullible teens and children to watch, they've been pretty rebellious from the beginning. And the main takeaway is to be a disruptor in the space, to go against the norm. If everybody's swimming upriver one way, you got to be the one going down the opposite way. Sometimes that can make an amazing brand and break the norms and skyrocket your brand, your company, just like Uber did. And those were all the 12 archetypes. I hope you stuck around and you enjoyed and you learned something from this. And I hope you apply it to your next branding project. Now, as promised, I want to look at a few brands and kind of apply these archetypes to them, which ones I think best fit their brand. I want us to do a little test and for you to guess which archetype these brands fall under. So I'm going to pause it and give you a few seconds to try to guess which one this falls under. If you guess the everyman, then you're probably right because Amazon is a place for everyone to shop for everything and it's not very high class it doesn't fall under the ruler archetype and I would say every man is a perfect archetype for Amazon now let's think about Pampers I'll give you a few seconds if you guessed caregiver, then you're right. Pampers is all about care, the very soft brand very approachable it's for babies diapers after all and finally we have Skittles 
If you guess the Jester, then you're absolutely right. Skittles is a very fun brand. If you've seen their marketing, their campaigns, they're always playful. They're always having the craziest, funniest commercials. So this is definitely a Jester archetype. If you enjoyed that video, please drop a like, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you want me to talk about next. Also, remember to grab that free PDF and join our Discord, Ted K Studio, where you can chat with us, hang out, and have a good time. Until next time, cheers.